Hi everyone, Troy Martin, TM Fitness. Glute training for the win. So these recommendations have come from Brett Contreras, usually known as the glute guy. He's a sports scientist and a personal trainer who's done tons of research, uh, written loads of articles. Uh, he's got a website called The Glute Guy, I believe, and he's got a YouTube channel as well. I'll put a link to that down below. So uh, he knows his stuff, so I am following his advice and giving credit where it's due. So why should you train the glutes? Well, the most important one, I believe, is lower back stability. Okay, so if your glutes are strong and they're stable through a complete range of motion, and if, then, if the muscles that generate that motion are weak, then you'll have less of that motion. Strong glutes will lead to less incidences of lower back pain. And similar for the knees. So strong glutes will improve knee stability for much of the same reason. So if the hips are, are lacking a range of motion and they're lacking strength, then the knees will do a lot of that work to compensate, just much like the lower back has been doing as well. So if, you, if particularly if you're a runner, if you're getting a lot of knee pain, it may be that your hips need to be stronger. Uh, and then hip strength will lead to better sprint performance. So if you play a sport that involves running and particularly there's any element of sprinting to it or changes of direction, your hips, your glutes are really, really important to so strengthen them up and you'll get better at your sport. You'll have less pain and you'll be a better sprinter. And then of course there's the aesthetic element as well. It's important for the ladies. If you look on Instagram, it's full of fit chicks flashing their bum and filling out their Lululemons. Is, is it lemons or melons? I never know. So if that's you, if you want to be that person, that's fine. But just, you know, be aware that nobody really cares. You know, you're doing that for you. You're not doing it for anyone else, except maybe for teenage boys who can't afford a porn site subscription. So, you know, I'm not judging if flashing your bum to total strangers on social media is your thing, fill your boots. Okay, so the practical side of it. So there's loads of exercises that you can do uh, to hit the glutes from all, all angles. Brett tends to narrow it down to three types of exercises. You've got uh, stretchers, pumpers, and activators. So stretchers will have a large range of motion. That means the eccentric phase, the lengthened phase of the muscle, is when the muscle is under the most tension and they're also the ones that not only produce the, the best results in terms of strength adaptations and hypertrophy but also the hardest to recover from so it takes longer to recover from those and you'll be sore the next day an example of a stretch would be a deep squat so when you're at the bottom of the squat that's when your glutes are eccentrically loaded so they're under a length tension pumpers so yeah pumpers generally have a medium range of motion so you can often do more reps uh, and you won't be so sore the next day so you can do them more regularly and a good example of a pumper would be you know, like a hip adduction type movement like a banded side steps when you've got the band around your ankles and you're stepping sideways activators small range of motion but a, a lot of tension going through the hips and through the glutes the whole time um, Really good for you know just getting your pump on, uh, but getting a, a big bang for your buck. Uh, and a good example of that is hip thrusts, like with a barbell across your hips or, or just bridges when you lay on the floor, lift your hips up. So you can break this down into advanced, intermediate and novice. So advanced, Brett recommends 15 glute-based exercises per week. So that's roughly three to four exercises four times a week. So you can incorporate, say, one or two stretches and two or three pumpers into four of your exercise routines per week. That is for advanced exercises. Most people that go to the gym are recreationally trained and not advanced. This is people that have been training, employing progressive overload and periodized training programs uh, for probably more than five years. Intermediate. So that's anyone who's been training, who's starting to be more progressive and more periodized with their training. You might be doing like four sessions a week and it might be an upper lower split or it might be a push pull type routine. And you've been doing that for a couple of years. So the intermediates, I would say two or three times a week is, is plenty. Uh, you're gonna get all the adaptation, all the stimulus that you need to get the results that you're looking for. So you'd be incorporating exercises like 
heavy squats, sumo deadlifts, lunges or Bulgarian split squats, hip thrusts and hip abduction exercises like the uh, banded sidewalks, clams, that kind of stuff. And then for novices, that's pretty much everyone else. Okay, any lower body resistance training exercise a couple of times a week will, will give you, you know, some form of stimulation and promote some form of adaptation. Okay, so for the advanced people, three to four exercises, four times a week. For the intermediate, which is pretty much everyone else, two to three times a week, incorporating some hip-centric exercises. I have a program called the Bikini Body Program. It's a full body program that incorporates this. So it's full body, three times a week, but with an emphasis on lower body, hips and core, uh, and a few kind of conditioning circuits in there as well to help you get your sweat on and improve your fitness as well as your strength. So there's a link to that below if that interests you, click it and then get on that. And that's it, that is glute training for the win. I've been Troy, this has been awesome. Give me a like, laters.